<laughs> Mike Staley Podcast. F- F- episode 1349. 1349. Next show, my gosh, will be halfway through the 1300. Wait, no, that's not right. Is that right? Yeah, the 1300. Huh? Numbers. They don't make sense to me. It's just a weird thing. I'm all left brain, folks. That's the brain where you podcast out of, I am told. Mike's Daily Podcast. Yes, so today, Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, John Deere the Engineer, and we bring you the segment called Note to Self. Mike's Daily Podcast. I have so many notes that I have made for myself, and they are often a help. Like when I wrote this note, it, it says the following bugs bumping into me while I'm walking on my walk and swallowing bugs. Ugh, I hate that. Mike's Daily Podcast. I was walking with my wonderful friend, Lady Katie, and she we were talking to each other, and Mike's I need to record her again Daily while we're walking, but podcast. I often find it's difficult to... Yeah. Walk and talk at the same time. As I've said, chewing gum and talking is difficult for me. Hmm? What? So, yeah. So, she was talking. And all of a sudden, a bug flew in her mouth and she did a total... <coughs> I wish I had been recording that. That was awesome. But, yeah. They're flying around in parts of Podcaster Valley as you walk the trail. Oh, look, good. Speaking of walking, look who walked in. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Shelly and Sue Hart, good stuff supervisor. Oh my god, bugs are disgusting. You don't like bugs? No, I don't like them. You, you sure? Okay, I kind of like them. I saw It's a Bug's Life. That was a, that was a movie with animated bugs. And then they made a ride that terrorized many children. That's at the place in Anaheim. Look who else walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike. Summertime, you should really check yourself for ticks. Mm -hmm. I want to see... Boom! Was that because I was about to start singing a Brad Paisley song? I'm going to check you for ticks. Why am I singing country even though I've left Country Crossroads Radio? I think I'm still feeling the residual effects. And you know how I was complaining nobody was saying anything about me leaving Country Crossroads Radio. Two people did. One person said, Hey, Mike. I feel really bad you're leaving Country Crossroads Radio. And here's today's podcast picture. He said it just like that. And he said, Hey, Mike, can you interview some of my clients that I have? I am a record promoter person. I need someone to interview my artists. Mm -hmm. Well, there are people that make money out of promoting musicians and I think that is a very noble job because you do what you like to do you enjoy music and you're promoting it and you're making money off of the poor sap that thinks they can actually sing whoa that was really mean Mike no it's serious I'm serious there the, the artists he gives me a couple are really really good but some oh my gosh It's like the producer was, okay, I hit record. Go ahead. I'm going to go over here and do a lot of drugs while you're recording. So go on. You know what? Actually, you sound so bad. I'm just going to leave through the studio door right now. Bye. (laughs) So... Unfortunately, this guy who made the comment has a lot of artists like that, so. Hopefully he changes that, gets a better producer for his artists. Anywho, anyway, cafe anyway. Anyway. Oh, there's your boyfriend. Oh my God, Mike Matthews, that's my boyfriend, Bob. That's wonderful. Yeah, so the podcast picture today was when I was walking my wonderful dog. His name is Basil the Boxer. What? It's not Basil the Boxer? It's Pierre? Go! Okay, my dog Pierre and I were walking and Pierre had to lift his leg and relieve himself. And there was, we were over by 
San Leandro Marina. I know I've posted many a podcast picture from there. But in this little scenario on Friday, or scenario, if you will, whatever. You say tomato, I say tomato. I saw a guy back his boat. We were at the boat ramp, and that's what the picture is of. He backs his boat into the water on his little boat hauler trailer thingy, dumps the boat into the water, and then drives away. And the boat's just sort of floating there in the water. And I I see in the picture that you don't actually see that it, it's not tied. It kind of looks like it's tied to the dock, but it ain't. So it's just sort of floating there. And this, the, what happens is, of course, if a boat is just sort of floating there, it could float away from the dock, and then you've... Maybe your boat floats into the middle of the channel and then you'll never get to it again unless you swim out to it. That has happened to me. When I was a kid, I had a boat. I had a little boat. And I did not tie it up and it floated out and I had to swim out and get it. But it was summertime. It was a beautiful day. It's California. What the hey? But this guy, he made it down to the dock in time to grab the boat. And So you see that boat at mikesdailypodcast.com and other podcast pictures as well as you can listen to past interviews and you can click on the wonderful Amazon link to buy whatever it is you're going to buy on that website that has taken over the world and the stock is so big blah 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 that is the thing everybody talks about that and I will stop so that's the mikesdailypodcast.com. If you're going to buy anything, go through that link at mikesdailypodcast.com. And there's also the PayPal. And you can help out the show that, that way. You'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. So it's so nice to hear some people are going to actually miss me on Country Crossroads Radio. Or they were just commenting so that they would realize that I need to return their emails about me interviewing their artists that are being recorded by a guy who's left the recording studio. I don't know. Cafe, I don't know. Cafe, anyway, I think... Anyway. We are at the end of this part of the show. No, no, we're just at the beginning. Because what I wanted to say as I was looking at my notes what I, that I mentioned earlier was the bugs. Yeah, so the bugs are just flying around and... Okay, right above this note, I wrote, Everybody's got their dog on leash. I had an off-leash park in Park Castro Valley on Sunday. Everybody's a bunch of chicken blanks. Oh, shifts. Chicken shifts? I don't know what that is. I obviously was trying to type with my thumbs and can't do the auto-spec correct that thing correctly so i think what i was trying to say is and i think i've mentioned this before so i'll just say it very quickly people in podcaster valley uh, are very blessed in that we have several parks where you can have your dog off leash because these parks are huge they're enormous they're massive expanses of land that go off into the hills and you can go hiking and your dog can be on off leash as long as they're under vocal command well, a lot of people on the weekends, this is always on the weekends, have their, they just keep their dog on leash. And I know that's what I used to do. I, was, I didn't know what my dog was going to do, so I just kept him on leash all the time. But what happens is that they are, uh, the dogs that are on leash get very upset because they're, apparently they're never walked. They're only walked on the weekend. So they have a lot of energy and they become extremely like just you're walking past them and they're just blah, 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 blah. So I find the we and I've talked to other dog walkers that this is true, that they maybe these weekend dog, walk, dog walkers need to walk their dogs a little bit more often and get a little bit more used to their dog being off leash and and teaching them off leash commands. Maybe go to a dog school. There are several in the area. And I found out that that chocolate lab on yesterday's show that I was discussing, that just sort of was walking around off leash, no tags, came over to my dog and started dominating him and just harassing him and would not leave us until I got home. 
that dog apparently walks all around my neighborhood. I talked to someone, a fellow dog walker, and she said, oh yeah, I've run into that chocolate lab before. And I said, what happened? She's got a nice dog named Molly. Did, did this chocolate lab try to harass Molly? And she goes, no, 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 they were fine. So for some reason, this chocolate lab, who apparently has free reign and has no tags over my entire part of Podcaster Valley, apparently uh, is nice on the whole, but was very mean to my dog. Okay, on to the segment called Note to Self. Note to Self. Burger Master. I don't know why I'm number two in Potomatic in the... Well, it's the news talk liberal section Because I'm so liberal And I'm going to talk about the awful Donald Trump He's so awful There, I've filled up the liberal quota of the show He and Pope Francis They just met Did you know that? They did Do you know that? The two leaders with contrasting styles and differing worldviews Met at the Vatican City on Wednesday Isn't it interesting that a Republican president Has a differing worldview From a Catholic The head of the whole Catholic Church A religion A Christian religion The biggest Is Has differences with a Republican president In some way In some world People's heads are going What? They're spinning around How is that possible? Well, they met at the Vatican City today, setting aside their previous clashes to broadcast a tone of peace for an audience around the globe. Trump, midway through his grueling nine-day maiden international journey, and I and and many experts admit he is doing a lot. He's doing he's on Nixonian levels of international diplomacy, where he has traveled the world, called upon the pontiff. At the Vatican early this morning Where the two had a private 30 minute meeting Laden with religious symbolism and ancient protocol The president accompanied by his wife and several aides Arrived at the Vatican just after 8am The president greeted Francis In the room The room of the little throne on the second floor of the Apostolic Palace Upon completing their meeting, the Pope gave the President a medal featuring an olive branch, a symbol of peace, among other gifts. And the President responded, we can use peace. The visit began with a handshake between the two men. Trump could be heard thanking the Pope and saying it was a great honor to be there. They then posed for photographs and they sat down at the papal desk. The Pope unsmiling as the private meeting began. He began unsmiling. Unsmiling That's interesting I didn't know you could do that Does that mean he was frowning? It ended a half hour later When Francis rang the bell In his private study Ding! The pontiff was then introduced To members of Trump's delegation Including his wife Melania His daughter Ivanka And son-in-law Jared Kushner Who's had a huge role In this international tour Of our president the uh, travel band, if you will. It's the travel band of travelers, as well as aides Hope Hicks and Dan Scavino. Smiling for the staff, Francis had a light moment with the First Lady, asking via translator, What do you give him to eat? Pizza? <laughs> oh, I wish I had that sound bite. Melania giggled and said, Pizza? Yes That's according to the Associated Press Wow Cafe wow Uh, Well that is pretty much the end of that story my friend for the moment I'm sure we'll find out more as time goes on But do you give him pizza to eat And Melania played along with it She looked like the type to me that would just be sort of What you talk to me huh But she you know she, I think she's getting used to this whole first lady thing As much as she can She just seems so I don't know What can you say about Melania We need to do a whole show about Melania a Very interesting lady I think There's a, a, a big Well they've already done on what Access Hollywood and everything about her So you know it's true 
Okay, I gotta get off the Melania thing. Two U.S. astronauts completed a hastily planned spacewalk outside the International Space Station yesterday, and they replaced a computer that failed on Saturday. This was, uh, they were, so they were out in space. The 50-pound computer, which is about the size of a microwave oven, is one of two that control equipment, including solar panels. But it's pretty cool that they uh, were out, they sailed 250 miles above the Earth in a 2.5-hour spacewalk. It's always neat when they do that. And they were let back in. They said, Hal, let us in, and Hal did open the pod bay doors. So that's good. Also out in space, that uh, there's this uh, star called KIC and then a bunch of numbers that apparently uh, it has ha- been having these odd dips in brightness. And these dips have yet to be explained, giving rise to all sorts of theories, including far out ideas like huge mega structures built by an advanced alien sa- civilization. Astrophysicist Tabitha Boyan Jian, who led the science citizen science project and for whom the star is named, predicted last year that the star's brightness might dip again as soon as May 2017. When her prediction came true last week, she notified major observatories and amateur astronomy groups via social media and other channels, and many swung their lenses in the direction of the constellation Cygnus and the mysterious star. That was not that apparently is dimming and and they can't explain it it doesn't follow any obvious patterns usually when a planets or even comets pass in front of the stars it tends to happen at a regular predictable interval and they usually block out the same amount of stars light as the last time they made a pass but the dips seen in the brightness of this star don't occur on a very tight schedule and they vary in how much they dim the stars light anywhere from three to more than 20 percent Maybe the star suffers from some kind of sickness. And finally, what? Are you groaning? A federal appeals court yesterday revived a Wikipedia lawsuit that challenges a U.S. National Security Agency NSA program of mass online surveillance and claims that the government unconstitutionally invades people's privacy rights. By a three to zero vote, The 4th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Richmond, Virginia, said the Wikimedia Foundation, which hosts the Wikipedia Online Encyclopedia, can pursue a challenge to the government's upstream surveillance program. The decision could make it easier for people to learn whether authorities have spied on them through upstream, which involves bulk searches of international communications within the internet's backbone of cable switches and routers and i would love to talk to Vi- uh, uh, vince vince in the bay he does a podcast called vince in the bay and i just found out he's following me my uh, website now which you can do because i have a wordpress account for my website at mikesdailypodcast.com and you can get regular emails of the uh, show when i post it Uh, He said to me he wants to be on the show, so we should talk about this kind of stuff. Upstream's existence was revealed in leaks by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden in 2013. And finally, 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 this is cool. I always like to throw something in here about innovation and things that we come up with that we didn't have back when I was a kid. And I'd look up at the sky and go, damn, why isn't that star so bright anymore? And damn... Will I ever meet a beautiful woman like Melania Trump, who is probably younger than me? No, I think we're about the same age. Maybe maybe she was in the same schoolyard as me, as I also grew up in hot woman a stan. I really need to get off this Melania Trump thing. A massive airship dubbed the Airlander 10 recently completed a successful test flight, bringing the helium-filled behemoth one step closer to commercial use. It looks like a massive blimp, but the Airlander 10 combines technology from airplanes, helicopters, and airships. It's designed to stay aloft at altitudes of up to 20,000 feet for up to five days when manned. Hybrid air vehicles built it. At a mammoth 302 feet long, it is the largest aircraft currently flying, and it passed its test. 
It flew for a total of 180 minutes to test the aircraft's handling, improved landing technology, and more. This was only the third flight of the Airlander 10. It first debuted as a different name and successfully flew in 2012 as part of the U.S. Army's Long Endurance Multi-Intelligence Vehicle Program. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcast for Valley. Well, we got to a lot today. I talked about bugs. I talked about unsmiling. I talked about the Pope. I talked about Melania. I talked about Melania. I have to stop talking about Melania, and I need to wrap up the show. We have some beautiful women in the uh, travel van, don't we? Got the Ivanka and the Melania. But... Not so good looking guys. We got the, the guy that eats a lot of pizza. And uh, is Steve Bannon on this? No. Steve Bannon is kind of a. I don't want to say anything bad about him. No, I really do. But I don't know. I, I got to watch that uh, PBS thing. They just had a new frontline thing about him. Let's see what they had to say. Just, I don't. He kind of looks like. A really next show it's going to be the wonderful Benita the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster just hmm burgermaster Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews his podcast is super easy to find download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com see you tomorrow bye